Hello, and welcome back. This is the speed run of the chapter review of the IBHL Math Analysis textbook with me, Vince. Um, and yeah, let's jump right in. We have a lot of questions to tackle. So I'm going to be doing the even questions, although if you are slightly more unfamiliar with functions, I would recommend you to do all of them, obviously. So for the even questions, the first question is, if f of 1 is equal to 2, g of 3 is equal to 1, and h of 2 is equal to 3, find f, g, h of 2. And if the inverses of f, g, and h exist, find h to the minus 1, g to the minus 1, f to the minus 1, Okay, I mean, this is actually quite a simple function. It's more of a trick question. So if f g um, h2, well, what would this be? We know h of 2 is 3, so this would be f of g of 3. We know g of 3 is 1, so this would be f of 1. And f of 1 is 2, so it would be simply 2. And the inverses. So if we have h to the negative 1 of g to the negative 1 of, well, f to the negative 1, 2 is 1. We know that, substituting this back into there. So this would be, to the be g to the negative 1 of 1. g to the negative 1 of 1 is 3, since we would need to invert 1 back into 3. So this would be h to the negative 1 of 3. And h to the negative 1 of 3 is simply 2 again. So yeah, pretty simple first question. Now um, let's move on to a harder question. And that would be question 4. So we need to list the transformations in order that transform the graph of f of x equals 1 over x to the graph of g of x is equal to 2 over ne uh, 3 minus x plus 4. So um, we want to write this new function that we have to translate our original function to into the form of the translations. 2 over 3 minus x plus 4. Um, actually, it's already in that form, so it should be pretty easy. So we know that a is 2. We know that, um, actually, we can make this a lot simpler by saying a is negative 2, because technically, this would be equal to negative 2 over x minus 3. And this is a simpler form. So a is negative 2, b is 1, and h is 3, and k is 4. So all we have to do is we need to stretch this graph by a scale factor of, we need to, sorry, vertically dilate this graph by a scale factor of negative 2. Next, we need to translate it by the column vector of 3, 4. And that should honestly be all for that question. Um, am I correct? I think I'm correct. Yeah, I'm correct. Okay, cool. So, on to the next question, where we have, we need to find g of x the inverse of f of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared in the domain 0, 1, and prove that f and g are mutual, that f and g are mutual inverses. So the function of f is invertible. So we know that f of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so let's get the inverse of this function. Remember, we do this by setting the y value to x and simply going 1 over 1 plus y squared and then making, it, making this focus on y. So we have 1 plus y squared is equal to 1 over x. 
So y squared is equal to 1 over x minus 1, and y is equal to, to the square root of 1 over x minus 1. Okay. And this is, yeah, um, the domain 0, 1. Okay, cool. Um, and we need to prove that they're mutual inverses. So this is, of course, g of x. And, well, let's just find the inverse of g of x. And if the inverse of g of x happens to be f of x, we know that they are mutual inverses. So we have x is equal to square root of 1 over y minus 1. And so we have x squared is equal to 1 over y minus 1. x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 over y. And y is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. So yeah, they are mutual inverses. And well, there, we've proved it pretty simple. Now, on to the next question. So the next question is to express 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 as the sum of two rational expressions with linear denominators. So we know that, helpfully, this is 2 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. And so we have to express it in the form of two functions, a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 3. Now, multiplying both sides by x plus 2 times x plus 3, we get 2 is equal to a times x plus 3 plus b times x plus 2. So we know that 0 is equal to a plus b, and 2 is equal to 3a plus 2b. So we know a equals negative b. So we can simply substitute that in over here. We can say 2 is equal to 3a plus 2 times negative a. In other words, 2 is equal to a. So a equals 2, and in that case, b must equal to negative 2. So this function. Oh, this function is simply equal to 2 over x plus 2 plus 2 over, uh, sorry, minus 2 over x plus 3. And that's it. That must have, yeah, that was pretty simple. And yeah, that, that should be correct. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now we're moving on to the exam <laughs> style questions. Uh, let's look at question 10, which is um, the graph of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 7 is translated using the vector to negative 1. Describe the effect of the translation on the graph of f and find the equation of the translated graph. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I, there's not much to say about the translation. I guess we, the only thing we can say is that... Um, Oh, sorry, 2x minus 4, yeah. Is that the graph would be shifted two units in the positive direction and then one unit, uh, and then negative one un unit down, so it would look something like that. But to find the um, equation of the translated graph is a bit more interesting. So first we want to rearrange our, our original equation into the form y is equal to a times x minus h plus k. So... This would be equal to 2 times x minus 1 squared plus um, 5. No, sorry, plus 6. Would this be correct? Uh, 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 6. Mm, looks correct to me. Yeah, that's fine. And so now we need to translate it using the vector 2 minus 1. So we need to add 2 to h, and we need to subtract 1 from k. So the new graph would be 2 times x. Well, if we add 2 to h, remember h is 1, so it's negative. So this would be x minus 3 squared plus 5. And now we simply need to expand this. 
So this would be 2x squared minus um, 12x plus 18 plus 5. In other words, 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. And um, that should be correct. I think, okay, so the book has done it the other method, and let's just cross check to see if we're right or not. Maybe I'm wrong. So this would be y is. I mean, sorry. We can express this in the form of y is equal to f of x minus h. In this case, um, h is 2, so it would be x minus 2 plus 1. So this would be equal to um, 2 times x minus 2 squared plus oh, minus 4x minus 4 times x minus 2 plus uh, 7 plus 1. So this would be equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 8, uh, 4 times 2, 8, yeah, minus 4x plus um, 12, uh, plus 8, plus 7, plus 1. Huh. Oh, minus 1, what am I doing, sorry. Uh, so this would be minus 1. And I think the book has made an error, because using their method, I, uh, I think they've made an error because this should still be equal to 2x squared minus 8x, oh sorry, minus 12x plus 23 if you sum it all up. And so our two answers should be exactly the same. Yeah, so that should be the answer for that question. So let's move on to the next question. The next question is asking us to consider the function f of x is equal to k over x minus 1 plus 1 and we need to show that it is a self inverse function okay mm. this is a interesting function I guess let's try and find the inverse so we would have x is equal to k over y minus 1 plus 1 and we want to have y as a subject, so we have x minus 1 equals k over y minus 1. So y minus 1 is equal to k over x minus 1. And therefore we have y is equal to k over x minus 1 plus 1. So yeah, it is a self-inverse function, so it is its own inverse function. So we, um, given that the domain is, oh, sorry, given that the domain is x is greater than 1, and of course x is part of the real number set, and that k is also part of the real number set, we need to find its range. Um, while x is greater than 1, this would only have positive values, would that be correct? Yeah, that would be correct. And it would have its asymptotes at x is equal to 1, obviously. But the more important asymptote is the y asymptote, and that would be at y is equal to 1. Because the lowest value this thing could be is 0 if, as x approaches infinity. And so the lowest value y would be is 1. So the range is simply y is greater than 1. Yeah. And we need to sketch the graph showing any asymptotes. Okay. So the graph, uh, gi given that we don't know what k is, um, but we can assume it's a constant, the graph is roughly that. So we have an asymptote over here at y is equal to 1, and we have an asymptote over here at x is equal to 1. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Pretty simple. Okay, moving on to the next question. We have the function f of x is equal to 17 minus 10x over 2x minus 1. x is part of the real number set. 
and x is not equal to 1 half. And we want to show that this can be written in the form of f of x is equal to 12x, 12 over 2x minus 1. Okay, so it's one of these questions. 12 over 2x minus 1 minus 5. So let's do some rearranging over here. Um, 17 minus 10x over 2x minus 1 is equal to um, 12 plus 5 minus 10x over 2x minus 1, which is then therefore equal to 12 over 2x minus 1 plus 5, uh, minus 5. So yeah, that was pretty simple. Uh, next, we need to state the equation of any vertical asymptote and any horizontal asymptote. So from this, we know the vertical asymptote is 1. And the, oh, actually, no, it's technically, um, they're being a bit sneaky. It's actually x is equal to 1 half. That is the vertical asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is simply y is equal to negative 5. Yeah. Um, and it's asking us to sketch the graph. I thought it was going to ask us for transformations on the graph of y equals 1 over x, but I guess this is easier. Um, and so we have a graph that looks something like this. Oh, actually, wait, no. It would be in the negative. And of course, we have our asymptotes here at y is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to 1 half. So that was pretty simple. Now, on to the final question. I, actually, it's been a lot faster. I think the first time I did a challenge, um, we took much longer than this. But given that f of x is equal to x minus 3, and gf of x, which is shorthand for g of f of x, is equal to 2x squared plus 18, find a function for g of x. Wow, OK, this one isn't that hard. So we know gf of x is 2x squared plus 18. So we know that 2x squared plus 18 is equal to g of um, x minus 3. Hmm. And we just need to find any function for g of x? Is that what they're saying? Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like it. So, I mean, g of x can be very simple. Um, let's go for the simplest option, and it's that g of x would be equal to x, well, let's think, x squared, if x minus 3 squared is x squared minus 6 plus 9. So, oh, okay, but I, I see, I see this. It's a bit more complicated than that. Let, let, let's see what they're trying to make us get at. 2x squared plus 18 is clearly 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Oh, okay, so we probably just have to do this. So we know, uh, we can just rearrange this. So g of x is equal to x times x plus 6 times 2. So 2x times x plus 6. And I, I, I think that's it. I think that's a pretty valid answer. Um, let's just see what they say. Um, I think, I th is this the wrong chapter? I, th I think there's an error in the book because it's not giving us a correct, okay, no, 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 it is. It's just being weird. So 2x times x plus 6, um, let's just expand this. And so this would be 2x squared plus 12x. And yeah, this is correct. This is what the answer that the book gives us. And yeah, so that's it. Um, that's the end of functions. I hope you enjoyed learning about functions with me. I hope you definitely learned how to do and handle functions as well. Um, next chapter will be about complex numbers. And I hope that you are up for the challenge. See you then.